Lord, we just pray that you would help us to live each day remembering the blessings that we have, Lord, because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, help us remember that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings, that we have so many things to be thankful for. Amen. And Lord, that it's only because uh, of, of your Son, because you have mercy upon us. And Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The first thing I, I want us to see out of this tonight is, and we already know this, this is not something new, but amen, it, it's something we need to continue in, amen? amen? To continue in the things which we have been assured of. To continue in the things that we have learned in the Word of God. The thing that I want, the first thing I want us to see tonight is we will never be complete of full joy and peace until we submit to God. Amen. Amen. This young man, he thought he was going to make his own way. And he said, Father, give me all that's coming to me so I can go my own way. And he lit, left and went out. Spent all that he had and the famine came in the land. And then he found himself eating with the slop in the hog pen. And he did come to himself, praise the Lord, that he came to himself. And what he came to realize is that he would never be happy. He would never be full of joy and, and contentment. He would never have peace in his life until he submitted under the authority of his Father. Amen. And that is the same for us. Now, this man, uh, this is a good picture of a man who, who is lost and, and, and is saved. As I said, he was lost and is found. But I want to look at it tonight that, you know what, even when we stray from our Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. we live as this man lived. Yes. We live in the pleasures of sin for a season, but the famine's coming to our life. Yep. Amen. The famine's going to come and it's going to hit us, and hopefully we wake up and realize that, you know what, in my Father's house, the servants have bread enough to eat and to spare. In my Father's house, they live good. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that there are no blessings like the blessings that come from our Heavenly Father. Amen. Look with me at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, starting in verse 5, he says, Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But He giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. I want to read that again. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Amen. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. I think right there he just described repentance. Amen? <laughs> Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He shall lift you up. The thing that I wanted to get out of these scriptures right here is that we are to submit ourselves to God. In all areas of our life, we need to learn to submit to God. Amen. To submit to His will for our life. Yeah, do we want to go out and we have plans and we have all these different things we want to do in our life, but you know what? Without God, we are not going to have satisfaction. Right. If we belong to Him, we're not going to have joy. We're not going to have peace in our hearts and in our lives. We're not going to have the blessings of God if we are out doing things our own way and not seeking to submit to His will. Right. But when we submit to His will, and if we have been doing things our own selves, we realize how wrong we were. And we repent of that sin. In other words, humbling ourselves in the sight of the Lord, He is going to lift us up. Yes. Amen? He's not going to leave us there. He's not going to kick us while we're down. But when we look to Him and humble ourselves, He is going to kill the fatted calf and make a feast. Amen? Amen. And the blessings that we have only come when we submit unto Him. 
Look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 and verses 1 through 4. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Amen. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to every one that believeth. I think it's over in Isaiah chapter 55. He says, Ho, come ye, buy and eat. eat. Those without money, come and buy and eat. Without price. Amen. <coughs> All it takes is that we humble ourselves, that we submit to the righteousness of God. Amen. Which is faith in His Word. Yes. As it says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. That we submit to that, to God, is just to believe His Word. Amen? Yes. To believe His Word enough to live by it. Amen? To live by it. Not to try to establish our own righteousness, to do things in our own strength, to do things our own way, but to submit to His way according to the Scriptures. Amen? Look at Hebrews chapter 12. And it has to be according to the Scriptures. Yeah. Because who knows, who, who knows the mind of the Lord? Who has instructed Him? Amen. Amen. But we have the mind of Christ, which is, in the, which is contained in the Scriptures, in the Word of God. For someone to say, I want to live for the Lord, I want to submit my life to the Lord, well, it's going to be by understanding what His will is That's according right. to His Word. People used to wear the bracelets and the t-shirts, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Well, get into the Word of God and find yeah. out, amen? amen? Don't just ask the question to look cool, but actually get in there and really find out what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 6 through 11 it says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partaker, partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. In other words, we submitted. Amen? Yes. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of yes. spirits Amen. and live? Yes. For they barely for a good few days chastened us after their own pleasures. But He for our profit, that we might be partakers of His holiness. Mm -hmm. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised mm -hmm. thereby. Amen. Yeah. Listen, if we've strayed from following the Lord and we're getting beat up for it, we need to humble ourselves and submit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Show reverence to God just as we did to our earthly fathers, to our earthly dads, when they chastised us, when they told us to bend over and grab our ankles, <laughs> you know, with that paddle, that board of education to the seat of understanding. <laughs> we submitted, didn't we? We said, you're right, not wrong. I'll change my ways, amen? Or we knew if we didn't, we were going to get some more. Yeah. Sometimes we're a little bit stubborn than most. I know us Willingham's were really stubborn. But nonetheless, if we submitted unto our earthly fathers, we need to submit to our heavenly Father. Yes. Amen? We need to submit and say, Lord, you're right and I'm wrong. 
And the only way we're going to receive that blessing is if we surrender ourselves to His will. And once we do that, it says, yeah, it's grievous. It's not pleasant going through those things. But you know what? Once we do and we yield ourselves to Him, then afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. When we will humble ourselves, when we will submit to God, then we see the joy and the peace that comes from it. Then we see the blessings that we've been missing out on. Amen? Amen. And that's exactly what happened when this young man finally said, you know what? I'm going to go home and I'm going to repent. Amen? I'm going to tell, tell my dad that, you know what? I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against him. And that, you know what? I need his forgiveness. That I just want to be a servant in his house because I'm no longer worthy to be a son. You know what? When we have that brokenness inside us, man, God is going to receive us with open arms. Amen? He's going to see us from afar off and He's going to run to meet us before we even know it. He's there. Amen? When we have that brokenness inside of us to humble ourselves, God is there immediately. Amen? Yes. To pick us up and to show us His arms of love. Amen. And also to, to uh, kill that fatted beast. Amen? To make that feast so that we might make merry. Amen. Aren't you glad we can make merry in the Amen. Lord? Because our sins are forgiven. Yeah. Because He has forgiven our sins and He has made us His sons. Amen. Oh, what love have, has the Father bestowed upon us that we are able to be called the sons of God. Amen. And so when we submit to God's authority, we see that we are given a continual feast to make merry. Amen? When you're living in the will of God, and when you're staying in His house, amen, you are going to have a continual feast. The joy is going to be there. Amen? The peace is going to be there. That joy that floods our soul. Amen? As we sing the song, Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. There's a continual feast when we are in submission to the will of God in our lives. Look at Romans chapter 8. And oh, what fellowship, what great fellowship we have with our Heavenly Father. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 through 17, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. We haven't been given the spirit of bondage of, to fear, but we've been given the spirit of adoption. Amen. Yeah. That Amen. spirit that dwells within us, that's our continual feast. Yes. Amen. Because every time we get into His Word and to study His Word, the spirit <coughs> that dwells within us comes out in the Word of God. Amen. And it illuminates us. It teaches us the things from God. It's like a light going on. Brother Sister Rena was talking about yesterday, a man they were talking to. Uh, and it, she said as they were talking to him, it was like a light went off in his head. And he was like, oh, wow. I've never understood it that way before. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, when you are with God and you are in fellowship with Him, there is a continual feast. Yes. There is a bless, the blessings of God overflow in your life Amen. when you are living in His will. Look at Galatians chapter 4. And when we have those blessings, His Spirit, as it says, beareth witness with our spirit that we know we are the children of God. And that in itself is a blessing. To have that assurance in our hearts and lives, knowing 
man, I'm a child of God. Amen. My heavenly Father, He loves me and watches out for me. Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6 says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Have a Father. Amen? Because we have been adopted, God has sent the Spirit of His Son, Jesus Christ, into our hearts and lives. Amen. Whereby we groan, we call out, Abba, Father, mm -hmm. my Father. Amen? He is our Father, Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. And what fellowship we have. You know, that's the, the worst thing about being in sin and being out of the will of God is that fellowship's not there. That's right. That fellowship is gone. And boy, what a burden that is. Because you don't have that joy anymore. Mm -hmm. All you have is doubts and fears. You know what? If you, when, when you submit to God and you submit to His will and you get things right with God, that fellowship comes back and all oh, that peace just overfloods, doesn't it? Knowing that I'm right with the Lord now. And have that peace and that sweet fellowship with our Father, knowing that all is forgiven. Look at Proverbs chapter 15. You know, we wouldn't have that joy if it was a stipulation. If God said, Well, I'll forgive you this time, but you're, you know, you're on probation. You mess up one more time, you're out. There wouldn't be much joy in that. <laughs> but we know that we have been forgiven. We know that God says, you know what? Whatever it is, I'm glad you're gone. You are forgiven. Boy, what wonderful joy that is. Proverbs chapter 15 and verses 15 through 17, it says... All the days of the afflicted are evil. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Amen. <laughs> Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble Amen. therewith. Amen. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stall ox and hatred therewith. That's right. You know what? All the days of the afflicted are evil. All the days of those outside of the will of God are evil. Amen? There's no good in them. I tell you what, when you're living outside of the will of God, there is no joy. There is no blessing. You might find some pleasure in the sins of this world for a while, but I'm going to tell you, it's when your heart is made merry that you have a continual mm -hmm. peace. Amen. And you will realize that it is better with a little fear of the Lord than great treasures and trouble therewith. Right. Oh, once we submit to God's authority, once we submit to God's Word, we are given that continual feast. Mm -hmm. Amen. The last thing is, let us not forget let us not take for granted the blessings that we have from our obedience to our Heavenly Father. You know, I think as we serve the Lord, sometimes we do take for granted the blessings. We do take for granted the, the joy and the peace that we have. Just as the older brother took for granted. And when he saw the feast that his brother was having, you know what? Sometimes we look at someone that maybe has been outside of the will of God and they get right and boy, they're on fire for the Lord. We look at them and say, you know, why are they so happy? Why are they, you know? But you know what? We forget that we have that same blessing. Yeah. We live in the same house. Yeah. We have the same Father. Amen? 
It's not because that He has not offered those things to us. It's because we've taken them for granted. We've taken for granted the blessings that we have in the Lord, that fellowship that we have every day. Yes. We can have that same fire and excitement in our life. We just have to want it. Amen? Amen. We just have to ask for it. But we forget, don't we? And just as His Son, He went out and enticed His Son to come in and said, Come on, and treat His Son to come in. And His Son said, Man, I'm upset, Dad. You know, here your Son has devoured your living with harlots. And, and, and you know what? He came back and the first thing you do is you kill a fat calf and have a feast. But what did His Dad say? He said, Son, Thou art ever with Me, and all that I have is Thine. You know what, son? You could have had it any time you wanted. All you had to do was ask. You're ever with me. That's what he's saying. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hey, if, if we feel like we don't have what someone else has had, uh, as far as their joy and as far as their peace, you know what? It's probably because we're just not asking God. Amen? Yeah. It's probably because we're just taking it for granted that we have the blessings of God and not seeking them in our lives. Mm -hmm. Our Heavenly Father wants to bless us just as much as He wants to bless all His children. Amen? He's not a respecter of person. He doesn't bless one above the other. But He will bless us all if we come to Him seeking those blessings. Yes. Seeking that fellowship. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 through 32, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom He called, them He also justified. And whom He justified, them He also glorified. Amen? Yes. What shall we say then, or what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And this is the verse of Scripture I really want to get to. He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Amen. Amen. You know what Jesus is saying? He's saying, You are with me forever, and all that I have is Thine. Why are you upset? Why are you so bitter? Why are you so angry? You are with me. You are my child. And everything that I have, I've given to you. Amen. He's saying, I've given to you my Son that you might have everlasting life. How will I, with, why would I withhold anything else? Amen? Why will I not with Him also freely give you all things? We are blessed. Amen? <coughs> yes, and we, we need are. to see those blessings in our life. We need to see those blessings yes. and not take them for granted. Because we are blessed way more than we are worthy of. Amen? Just as that son came back and said, I'm not worthy to be called a son. You know what? We might not be worthy to be called a son, but we are blessed. Amen? Amen. Because God is faithful and God loves us. Mm -hmm. And He has given us all things. Look at 2 Peter. We find in, in Hebrews it says to beware lest ye fell the grace of God. And therefore uh, bitterness spring up within you. And then thereby many are defiled. I know I didn't quote that exactly right, but the same thing is there. Is that, you know what? So many times we fail the grace, to see the grace of God in our life. So many times we fail to see the blessings and the gifts of God that He has extended to us. And therefore we allow ourselves to become bitter. Yeah. 
You know what Esau, he was going to sell his birthright for just a morsel of food. He didn't really see the blessings that he had, the promises that he had. He took for granted that birthright. He took for granted the blessings that he had been given from his father. And he just gave them up and he became bitter. You know what? So many times we take for granted what God has done for us and we allow ourselves to become bitter. But listen, let's not fail the grace of God. Let's not fail to see the blessing of God in our life. But let's look for those blessings. And when we see them, give God the glory. Amen. Amen. And praise His name. For He is good to us. 2 Peter chapter 1. In verse Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things, that pertain unto life and godliness. Let's read that again. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, mm -hmm. whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, <coughs> that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. Yes. Amen? Yeah. We have been made partakers of the divine nature. Amen. And God has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What did He say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We just need to have our hearts on the right things. Amen? We just need to have our affections on the right things. And God's going to take care of the rest. Amen? He's promised to do so. And He has said it in His Word. And if we believe that He cannot lie and that He does not change, that there is no shadow of turning, there is no variableness with God, that He is going to keep His Word, then we can stand on it and say that I have been blessed with all things. Amen? Yeah. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and we'll be through. Ephesians chapter 1 and starting in verse 1 says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings mm -hmm. in heavenly places <coughs> in Christ. Yes. Those are the best blessings. Yeah. Amen. Are the spiritual blessings. That's right. According as He hath chosen us and Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, <coughs> to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the, in the beloved. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, we're accepted in that love with, hope, with Paul, with Peter, with all those Great men of the Bible, amen. We are accepted in the blood. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure, which He hath purposed in Himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of time He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Amen. Mm -hmm. Being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things 
after the counsel of His will. Yes. That we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. Amen. Listen, we have obtained an inheritance. We have obtained our adoption. We are the children of God. And being a child of God comes with its benefits. Amen? It comes with its blessings. Yes. And let us not forget those blessings. Amen? But let us remember to submit ourselves unto God. Amen. And as we submit ourselves to Him and to His will for us in our lives, to understand that those blessings, that joy and that peace will flood our, our soul. And we will be able to say no matter what, as we sing tonight, it is well with my soul. Mm -hmm. 